Uh, hey, hey, Coach, just um, wanted you to speak a little bit about B.J. Goodson, who it just seems like week after week, uh, you know, you look up and he's breaking up a pass or making some kind of a game-changing play. So I'm just wondering if you could just talk about the season he's been having for you lately. What's been great about B.J. is he's the same every day. He just keeps getting better. And when he makes a mistake, the next time it happens, he gets it perfect and it happens throughout the week of practice as we're learning and then he gets in the game and he sees it and he's been able to close and make plays you know he had two really big ones in that first half last week that you mentioned one was when they attempted to throw to their eligible offensive lineman he did a great job of feeling that and then how he finished he didn't look back he just went and wrapped him up and got the ball out. And that was huge. That was that third and one. And then we were able to stop him. Sheldon did a great job on that fourth and one. And anytime you can take a possession by getting, by beating, by winning a fourth down, that's just like a takeaway. That's it. That's a possession. And that was huge. And then our offense went down and converted. That was a big time play. And then the other one was on the attempted two point conversion. When he went and saw the angle of the backs and play that they, they hadn't run before. And he went and tracked, you know, number 22, wrapped him up, and Andrew Sandejo came and, and helped finish him. But that was a big play because that kept points off the board. And that was a play that they hadn't done run yet. So those two plays, those really helped us in that football game. And by doing your job, playing and play out, when the big play comes, it's because of doing your job over and over and over. And that's what we've been impressed with, BJ. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Our next question goes to Nate Bullrich. Hey, Coach, uh, where do you see Taki Taki in his development? Oh, you got to smile when you, when you speak about Sione because the way he plays. Uh, he's, he's right where he needs to be. He's got, he got a lot of experience early in the year when some of our other guys weren't back yet. Uh, what's great about this position group is we have guys embrace and compete to get playing time. Um, Sione was out, he's outstanding uh, with contact. He's really good at same foot, same shoulder. What, what that means is if you're supposed to set the edge of the defense and you're on the right, then you want to hit everything with your left foot and your left shoulder and extend your hands. And he had two or three last week that were outstanding. Uh, he hit the fullback and he hit a tackle and a tight end that way. He's really good and getting better on the edges of the defense. So that's where he plays some of his time, but he's improved playing off the ball as well. So, He's right where he needs to be in his progression. He's getting better and better. I love the confidence. We love the confidence coming from Sione right now, and we're going to need that the next time we play at night. It's going to be awesome. Hey, uh, one more thing on him. You know, he it was kind of a, a weird um, sequence of events recently for him. He gets the pick six against the Eagles. I mean, that's like the biggest play of his career, right? Right. Two days later, he's on the COVID list. Then he comes off the COVID list on a Friday and short turnaround before, uh, you know, the game in Nashville. How has he responded to all that? What are your conversations been like about just kind of that bizarre sequence? Well, you know, we, we just, we talk about find a way. We talk about treating each day for, its, you know, being itself. We don't know. It's, it's next man up to us. And, and the, the room has been, the guys have been outstanding at this part because, they just, they don't bat an eye. They don't blink. So what we did, Sione and I, little extra meetings, Zoom meetings, of course. Okay. And Sione, one day of practice, came out and played well. Uh, but that's, that's the training that Sione has done on his own and with us and how he's practiced throughout the year. And, and he's, we're, him and us are, are getting the benefits of that. So we just prepare and go and deal with each day one day at a time. And that's that's every coach's phrase, and, and it always is. But we've been living that, and we're very proud of the players and the team, and we need to keep doing it. Hey, Scott Petrick, you're up. Hey, Coach, how's Malcolm Smith done in what seems to be an increased role? Um, looked like he made a couple of big plays for you last week, too. Malcolm played really, really well. Um, one of the best plays with Malcolm was something that goes unnoticed a lot. And that was the play at the end of the first half 
they were in a position where they didn't have any timeouts left and they were trying to get more yards rather than throwing a Hail Mary. And we we're in a defense to make sure they can't get out of bounds. Malcolm was all the way away from the play, timed it right, burst it all the way across the field and went and punched the ball out. And we got that ball. And he does things that are very smart. He knows where he is on the field, down and distance, space, time. He's just got a great feel. And what happens with Malcolm is, is we put him in those positions and that's where he can be really successful. So we rotate, everybody plays, you know, it was really cool. Tay Davis made a great play uh, at the end of the game, sidebar, but uh, really happy for him because he lives in Nashville and his family was there and he got to, he made great plays on special teams. Also went in and batted a pass away. It was awesome. Cause anytime you play in front of your home people, uh, it's awesome to make a play. So sidebar, proud of Tay. But uh, Malcolm excels in understanding situational football, and we use them that way. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Matt. Jeff Chanel, you have our next question. Hey, Coach, what do you tell your uh, your linebackers about <clears throat> Lamar Jackson to make sure? You know, how do you what do you tell him about about those about him? Excuse me. Well, we know that. He's really good with the ball in his hands and incredible athlete and a uh, competitor. So what we got to do is we got to work. We don't know how long the play is going to take, you know, and, and because the football team we're about to play can extend plays. And he's a piece of that, of course. So what we want to do is we don't want to count, you know, do, uh, I played hard for six seconds. We just want to play until the ball, until we get the man with the ball on the ground or, take the ball and get it back to the offense. Uh, and that's what you have to stress when you play a team like this because they can extend plays. So we got to play. We just got to work and we got to play and we got to, we got to trust what we see. And when the ball comes out of his hand, we got to break. And if the ball is still in his hand, we need to approach him and not jump up in the air because he's crafty. So we need to run and track him and, find a way to get them on the ground. Sometimes that's going to take one person, but most of the time it's going to take more than one. Thank you, Jeff. Mary Kay Cabot, you're next. Hi, uh, yeah, Coach. How, how are you guys different, uh, maybe just even as, as linebackers, but as, as a defense, you know, than you were in that for, first game? How much better do you know your personnel and how have things changed since then? Oh, yeah. Our, our, our guys, the, the reps and the experience that they've got and how tight they become as a unit and as a football team is just watching them grow week to week. It's not even close. Uh, you know, when you, when you're in that first one, we did some really good things. She only played well in the beginning of that game. We, we made some plays um, in the run game, but there's also plays that we saw that we've been able to correct and work through throughout the year. So we've come further. So have they, so, you know, each game is different. It, it's not going to be the same game, but we need to learn from the things that have happened and then trust what we're seeing when we get in this football game and, and use our knowledge of how they use their players and what kind of plays they run to our advantage. So each game's totally different. And this is a long gap between games. You know, like when we played uh, – Cincinnati, those were close gaps. So those were pretty similar. This one is a long gap. So it's two totally different teams, but we gotta we gotta take what we've learned, that's for sure. And do you expect Greg Roman to throw some new wrinkles at you guys that, that you didn't see in that first game? Oh yeah. 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 We gotta use our rules. You know, and, and that's the key with defense. The the offense, you can say a, a coaching phrase is they get the pen last. So so they call the play, right? And and we gotta use our rules to defend the play. So some of the things that they're doing a little different it is some third downs and fourth downs that they're using some different type of run or pass schemes. So we got to use our rules within our calls to stop that. So some of our rules are going to be different than the first game. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Dan Lobby, you have our next question. Hey, Coach. Um, Joe Woods, what have you kind of noticed about him? How has he been able to sort of navigate through this weird year with injuries and losing guys with COVID for a couple games here and there? What, what have you kind of seen from him as he's navigated this? Well, you know, Stuart Scott, okay, outstanding man. All right. 
one of his phrases was cooler than the other side of the pillow. Of course, I can't do it justice because Seward said it a lot better than me. But that's how I describe Coach Woods. He, he's consistent. It doesn't, things don't phase him. He's, uh, he's direct and he's exact and he's precise. And he, if something hurts us, he were, he's constantly working to find the, the next answer and make a call. So he's cool, he's calm, he's patient, and, but he's demanding and he's truthful. And when you're that way, uh, we all hope to be like that because when you're that way, people follow you and more often than not, you come up with the right answer. So I'm proud, proud to work with him. And uh, he's just, he's the same all the time, direct and just wants to put the guys in positions to make plays. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. We'll go to Tony Grossi. This will be our last question for Coach Tarver. Hey, uh, Jason, uh, this question is about Jacob Phillips. And uh, I take it his development has been slowed by the fact that he hasn't been available, you know, for every game. And if he's healthy now, how difficult is it for you or the coaches as these games get more important to just give him the playing time needed to develop them? Well, here's what we here's what we did. He's his reps have increased on defense. I think he got 18 last week. Um, you know, the, the week before the emphasis was hit was uh, getting the calls out and making sure he can make the calls. He was outstanding with it last week in the game. So let's go with his progression. He played pretty well in the first game, you know, way back against these guys. Uh, you can see his speed and then proud of him because as a 21 year old uh, young man in the NFL, you, get, you may not have ever had to work through an injury. So he works through an injury. You should see him. He just stretches and works all the time. He's very direct. Um, and so he worked his way back, and then he had to earn his right to get playing time. So you've seen his reps increase. He's been earning it. He had a really good day yesterday, and that's what we're about. So him and I check in at the end of every day. He watches the video. I watch the video. He tells me what he thinks, and we're just growing up together. So the better you play, the more you earn, and you'll see him some, and he'll roll in because he's fast and he's strong and, and he's getting better. So maybe set him back, but he's right where he needs to be right now, which is improving, and he'll be in the game. Yeah. So we're excited to watch him again. It just seems to me that uh, the emphasis on speed at your position group has kind of Lamar Jackson in mind, right? Oh, yeah, you're going to see everybody. You're going to see us all. We, we're, we're, we roll in and we embrace our roles. And that's what makes this room, this group, fun to be around as a coach and proud because I know I've used that word a lot today, but that's where you are. You know, we got, we got to go, we got to do the best we can to go one and oh, and everybody's going to get a chance. And the better you play in your chance, the more you earn. So he's right where he needs to be. And we just want to see him go in, make the right call. And, Run, shed, tackle the guy with the ball, because that's what we do as linebackers.